The greatest part of my job is I work with my spiritual leaders, the children. Um, I get to take care of children who uh, have had impairments, significant disability, and my job is, uh, as someone once described it, my purpose is to help them find their purpose and how can these kids actually minimize their disability and have the greatest quality of life possible and therefore it becomes this great synergy of us working together to make that happen. Well originally when I came to Purdue I had um, little idea other than the fact that I wanted to be a veterinarian and we had Mr. Murphy was our high school guidance counselor I was the first to go off to college and when I told him I was going to be a veterinarian he said well then you have to go to Purdue that's where the vet school is so that made the decision easy. It was the only school I applied to, and frankly, my parents and I, know none of us knew how this worked. So you apply to one school, you tour there, and, and I came here to become a veterinarian. Uh, ultimately, it was a, a wonderful experience for many other reasons, but uh, it was a very simple decision at the beginning. When I was on campus, I was involved in several clubs, mostly the uh, like pre-vet honorary, um, several different honor societies, uh, played a lot of rugby. Uh, that was a great sport for me and did probably every intramural sport. I'm pretty sure I tried every one of them while I was here. Ultimately, I was in the uh, residences, the campus residencies, my entire six years and thankfully got to be what we called a counselor back then, RA now, and then I became a staff resident um, for two years at McCutcheon Hall, which now called the REA position. The highlights for me on this return visit, again, just hanging out with the students and uh, being asked to tell the same story over and over again. <laughs> I, was, I, I had the great blessing of working with Mother Teresa in 1997, and I said, I, I read, had read all of her books, and you sit and talk with her, and basically she says the same things over and over again. There are certain pearls of wisdom, little tidbits of wisdom to live by. And, um, I, and I do find that I, I tend to say a lot of the same things over and over, but I, I felt like the children that I've been blessed to work with have taught me some very important things, so what I call the virtues or the principles of living, these 12 principles that where I can make others' lives better and therefore benefit myself and have a better life myself. And so to get to come and share that with not only the book that I've written, but also to talk with the students and even though I might highlight one child when I tell that story, that each of those virtues or each of those principles have been driven home five, six, you know, multiple, multiple children that I've gotten to work with in one of 31 countries, this country and 30 other countries where I've worked. But to be able to meet a, um, a young man or woman here who's not only from China, but is actually from that particular city where I worked in China, that's very rewarding to be able to say, oh yeah, I've been to your country. Oh, and I've been to your city. And then to be able to tie that same principle to the story of a child that I might have seen uh, in their city, uh, I just think it stresses the interconnectedness of all of us spiritually, um, which is again what the children have taught me. And then just from a selfish standpoint, once again, to actually bring the Timmy takedown to a college campus, that has been a dream of mine for years. And I'm so thankful that that was done. And it was done so well. And the parents and the children and all of they were all saying, even Big Brian, Cargo as we call him, said, this was better than any of the shows we've done elsewhere. It, the energy of the students really made that great for the kids and therefore it was the greatest Timmy takedown for me.
think the greatest reward I get from my work is, um, first of all, just who I get to practice with. The fact that I get to see these kids all the time, but there are some really powerful moments when uh, a kid will give me a hug or, um, you know, just say, I love you and thank you. Um, kids that have said that had they not met up with me and the team that I work with, they wouldn't have had a life beyond that disability. And for their parents to say um, how it had made such a substantial, substantial change in their lives, not only for the child, but for the parents. I, I can think of many times when children would come in and I, the child might be in a wheelchair and have cerebral palsy, and I would say, so where are you gonna go to college? And you see the child get excited and mom and dad almost fall out of their chairs like, Nobody said anything about college, but I don't see why, why wouldn't they go to college? I mean, that, it's going to be very important that they get higher education. Um, one kid recently, I went to a uh, reception where he received an award, and it was, it was great to hear him step to the podium, and he said, Dr. Chuck treated me as if I were his son, and that was powerful to me. Anybody, I said, the greatest gift I can give you is access to my patients. These kids will make you a better person if you allow yourself to hang out long enough. And that's been the beauty and the fun, um, the fun of it. And just to watch that light turn on in each person when they do encounter. And then they get to be a part of the show. And the momentum typically just picks up. If we do it next year, there'll probably be twice as many people. And who knows, Randy may show up with a crazier outfit. <laughs>